FPV long-range flying is not a hobby where you reach a final goal at some point. You're always trying to get more out of your equipment. You want to fly farther and higher. A good connection and confidence are key to breaking your own records. My drones are relatively small for the long-range purpose. The Bob 57 is a 6-inch quad, and the Recon Y6 is a 5-inch hexacopter. I have always wanted to try a 7-inch drone. A 10-inch quadcopter is too big for me in terms of portability and weight because I love hiking with my drones to reach special, quiet places. Since the difference between 6 and 7 inches is minimal, I decided to go bigger. I came across the Speedy B Mario 8, which seems to be a good size for efficiency and portability at 8 inches. There aren't many videos about this drone, especially about long-range flights with this one on YouTube. This made me curious, so I ordered a frame. You can find a complete list of the components I used in the description. The frame is high quality. Everything fits perfectly, and an online assembly guide helps you put everything together. Due to its total size, the frame is longer, so the camera cable of the O3 has to be lengthened. I took an O3 that had already been used and disassembled the camera cable as shown in many tutorial videos. Changing the cable is really easy, but be careful with the connectors. They seem to be very sensitive. After preparing the O3, I mounted the motors. I used the recommended 1050 kV motors from Speedy B. They look solid too. The frame comes with great mounts for the GPS, receiver antenna, and single VTX antenna. However, I want to fly with a diversity setup for the receiver and two long antennas for the air unit. I created a custom mount for the VTX antennas at the back so that I can screw on antennas. This makes it easy to disassemble the antennas if you need to store the drone in a bag or suitcase before a flight with an airplane. Now that everything is ready on the frame, I can start assembling the electronics. First, I added the battery connector to the ESC, and then I soldered all the motors to it. I left some length to maintain the folding functionality, although I'm not sure if I will use it. After soldering, I decided to coat the ESC. I'm not sure if I'll make the drone completely waterproof, but I'll definitely cover the essential parts. This will give me more confidence when flying through clouds or starting in the snow. Next is the flight controller. I copied the idea from the iFlight builds to add connectors for the receiver and GPS module. This makes it easy to change these components if needed. I also soldered a connector for the beeper so that it would be easily changeable. After completing the soldering, I simply connected the components by plugging them in. I attached the diversity receiver antennas to the bottom of the rear drone arms. Hopefully, this will provide a stable connection in all situations. As always, pairing the receiver to the TBS Tango 2 is easy. Everything works fine. During the build, the DJI 04 air unit was released. I tested the new air unit with my Recon Y6 and decided to use it with the Mario 8, too. Overall, it's because of the O4's better connection compared to the O3. I want to reach new limits, so a reliable connection is essential. While connecting and assembling everything, I noticed that the USB port of the flight controller is not accessible with the side plates mounted. I cut out part of one of the side plates to add a 90-degree connector between the bottom plates of the frame. On the other hand, Speedy B flight controllers connect via Bluetooth and can be configured with a mobile app. However, setting up the drone from scratch is much more comfortable with a USB connection to a laptop. 
I will provide a dump of my current Betaflight settings for the drone in the description. This is not an optimal tune, but it's a configuration that anyone can use to get started. The tension rises. It's time for the first flight of the drone. Hopefully, everything is assembled and set up correctly. For the first flight, I will use a small 2200 milliamp hours LiPo battery. The battery is connected. The goggles have a picture. The OSD data is received. I'm just waiting for some satellites. The drone is armed. Take off. But then the drone flipped by adding some throttle and disarmed automatically. I remember seeing this behavior with a different drone when one of its motors broke during a flight. It seems the flight controller recognizes when the corrections it wants to make are not working and disarms automatically. I decided to connect the flight controller to the mobile app to check the motor settings. I had some trouble flashing the ESC at first, so I wondered if I missed something here. Indeed, the motors were the problem. I forgot to set the motor order in Betaflight correctly after the last flashing. The order of the motors was completely wrong. Okay, next attempt to start the drone after fixing the issue. The drone is armed. Take off. Everything is working perfectly now. The drone is airborne and stable. I have never flown a drone this size before. Maybe it's just me, but you can definitely feel the difference in size. Its flight behavior is much more stable. The control inputs are unusual, but that's probably due to the default beta flight tuning. I checked the connection quality of the receiver and the video signal to ensure that everything was connected and set up correctly. The VTX connection appears to be functioning properly. However, the Crossfire connection increases to 500 milliwatts when turning around, which is strange for a distance of only one kilometer. After landing, I checked the connection and found that only one antenna was getting a signal. I wanted to check the antenna connection to the receiver. Upon disassembly, I discovered that one antenna had been crushed during the assembly of the top plate and was broken. I replaced the antenna, and now the connection switches between the two antennas perfectly. I'm happy with how the first flight went, and I'm looking forward to my upcoming adventures with this drone. Next, I'll research PID tuning to find a setup that works for me. Then, I can complete my first long-range flight with the Mario 8. Stay tuned so you won't miss it. Cheers.